Hey everybody, welcome into Wager Talk TV. I'm Tony Mejia from SportsMemo.com, and we're going to be previewing the first of two semifinals at the Olympics in the men's tournament as Germany and France square off for the right to face the United States Serbia winner. The U.S. have a favorite there, but in this one, it's the Germans favored in what is decisively a road game against the French. Germans are favored by five or five and a half, depending on where you look. Total is set at 157, and uh, the money line favors the Germans at just under minus 200. If you think the French will pull out the upset in outright fashion, then you can bet the French at plus 168, plus 170, get the best price available. France comes off a huge upset of Canada. Uh, they clamped down on everybody not named Shea Gilgis Alexander and uh, ultimately ended up uh, getting a, a favorable whistle. But uh, for the most part, they really controlled the action uh, from start to finish. So you really can't blame the officiating on the result. Rudy Gobert uh, took a seat on the bench uh, next to Vincent Collette for most of the contest, and it ended up working out. And we'll see what happens here uh, with Gobert. I believe he'll play a lot more than he did against uh, the Canadians because uh, guys like Kelly Olynyk were on that roster, Trey, Trey Lyles, players that can pull him out from under the basket. And uh, Germany has similar guys in terms of uh, bigs like Mo Wagner who can come off the bench and give them problems. So we'll see exactly what Colette uh, chooses to do with Rudy Gobert, but Victor Wembanyama will be out there. This is the third meeting between Germany and France uh, in just about six weeks time. They met in early July and uh, the Germans won 70 to 65, but Wembanyama did not play. And uh, most recently they squared off in group B action uh, in early August, August the 2nd to be exact, and Germany won 85 to 71 to win group B. Wemby went for 14 and 12, but it was all Germany from the jump uh, as they led 48 to 27 at the break and 69 to 46 entering the third quarter, uh, entering the fourth quarter, I should say, Dennis Schroeder and Franz Wagner each scored 26 points. And uh, it really was a case of uh, one team outclassing the other there. But again, coming off a victory over Canada, which had been undefeated in this tournament, uh, should be an eye opener uh, for France as far as uh, being an example of what they can do when they're at their best. And if they can get Gobert to give them quality minutes without being a liability on the offensive end or without being pulled away from the basket uh, and uh, presenting mismatches for Germany to take advantage of, then I think this one would be tight. Um, we'll, we'll see if uh, Evan Fournier continues to shoot the ball well. He had a couple of huge baskets in that fourth quarter and is obviously uh, France's most lethal scorer. Uh, but they, they have guard issues. I would certainly give Germany the edge uh, at guard. Uh, Dennis Schroeder came off the bench uh, most recently, but he played almost uh, the most minutes on the team and is still the driving force. Remember, Germany won the FIBA World Cup last summer. Uh, defeating everybody in their path, including Canada, which uh, eliminated the United States uh, as well. So uh, this was a, a situation where Germany is riding a hot streak. The Wagner brothers play with tremendous chemistry, obviously. Schroeder plays on the national team at a level that he does not enjoy in the NBA. Uh, so he is a force to be reckoned with. And for that standpoint, uh, I think that Germany is rightfully favored and will get the job done over France, but I don't love laying the five points, especially uh, if the French are behind. They will uh, do everything in their power in that fourth quarter to try to rescue the result. Uh, what I do like in this game is the under. I think that uh, you know we saw a game, like I said, that was 70 to 65 between these two in early July, even though the most recent matchup uh, ended up being 85 to 71. That is still under the current posted total. And I'm taping this on Wednesday afternoon, but of 157. And I think that's pro probably the max that you'll see scoring wise. I think it takes 80 points to win this game. I could see this game ending up being a 75 72 game. Uh, so from that standpoint, we're going to try to play limbo with this total and ride the under. Uh, some scoring props to be aware of. Uh, currently, uh, Germany's Daniel Tice is at seven and a half. 
Uh, I like that, especially since he's a guy that if Gobert does play, can also draw him out onto the perimeter. Schroeder is at 18 and a half. I like the under there. I think he'll be more floor general than actual scorer and look to facilitate in this matchup uh, with Schroeder's ability to uh, drive past with his speed that um, the uh, weakness for France is, is their speed at guard. So uh, Schroeder's uh, assist total is pretty high at seven and a half. I would back the under there too, but it just goes to show you that uh, he is going to be a catalyst in this game. And I, I would think that even if he gets 16 points and seven assists, those the, both, both of those numbers are under uh, what the, totals for him are player prop wise, but still a productive game and certainly enough to get Germany by in this matchup. Fournier's assist total is at two and a half. Mo Wagner is at two and a half as well. When Banyama, who the entire French offense should run through, is at three and a half, and I would take the over on that. Uh, Wemby's rebound total is at 11 and a half. Uh, he is also at 32 and a half for points, rebounds, and assists. And Wembenyama is at 16 and a half on his scoring total. Gerson Yabuselli was the key for factor, the X factor against Canada. Um, really outplayed guys uh, that are more household names than he is. Uh, Yabuselli was an NBA draft pick, uh, but did not pan out. His point total for this game is 10 and a half. I think he'll continue to be an X factor. So I would bet the over on him. But uh, again, Coming off uh, an upset of Canada in a game where neither Jamal Murray nor Dylan Brooks was able to do much offensively, uh, France has to feel most confident in its defense, especially if they can get a, a three-time defensive player of the year and Rudy Gobert to uh, play to his capabilities uh, in the minutes that, that he does and end up burning on the floor. So we'll go with the under in Canada, France under 157 winner plays for the gold medal against the united states and serbia smash that like button and uh make sure you subscribe to all our videos here at wager talk tv uh follow me on twitter at mejia de Nero, and make sure you are aware that we have a lot of site-wide specials at both wager talk and sports memo uh so check out sm.buzz slash tdm for my package deals and uh to see exactly what we're offering. We've got a, a site-wide special on Friday, uh, a customer appreciation deal. We've got a deal where you can get two months uh, for, for uh, no, September and October and get the rest of August free. So again, peruse the site and see what fits you best and let's make some money together. Thanks for watching. We're riding Germany and France to go under 157 points. I'm Tony Mejia. Have a wonderful rest of your week.